Hi, in this video I want to show you how to create custom pixel brushes. In my previous tutorial I showed you about vector brushes, so I would like you to have a notion on what's the main differences between them. Let's go with it. Okay, so I have this image that I grabbed from Google. I searched for blood stain or blood splatter or something like that, and I found this image here that I found quite interesting to create a brush with because as you can see it's full of little detail it has different opacities to it some drippings here so I think it's a good candidate to make a nice brush so the first thing I want to do is selecting it I can hit to the here to the main menu and I select layer new adjustment invert now I have it inverted, I command C copy, I come here and I say new from clipboard. So I click in there. For me, this is the fastest way to just create a canvas that is exactly the size I need. Okay, so as you remember, if you watched my previous tutorial for the vector brushes, we want things in a certain way, which was um, black background and white brush itself in order to be created here things are going to be slightly different but we're going to start with the same idea so because this is not exactly white but blue i come to color my color panel i'm going to change to hsl and i'm going to just tweak a bit things so i get it more like black and white now I think I want a little bit more of contrast. So, um, layer, new adjustment, brightness and contrast. I'm gonna pull up this, change this without losing all the details and the differences that really make it look interesting, okay? So now we have it, close this one. Okay, so now that I've done these tweaks to the image, the original one I had, I'm going to come to layers and I'm going to right click and rasterize in such a way that this becomes a pixel layer. Now I come to select and I say select sample color. As you can see in here, we have this marquee that we have the possibility to change the tolerance too in such a way that we grab more information or less information this is something that you have to just try and see which one works better with your example okay so i think i'm gonna leave it um, to something like 16 i think that works okay for the exercise and i'm going to say apply now i click return and I get rid of the black. Still, I have these grayish stains in here that are not exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna click Command D to get rid of the marquee and I'm going to refine a bit my graphic. If I come up again to select, you're gonna see that these options are grayed out. The one I need is refine edges. So because I cannot click it, I have to go back to where I was before, come to select and click refine edges. Okay. So this is an overlay you get in order to see what the information is going to be, what information is going to be kept in your brush. If I turn this into black and white, you're going to see how rough it is. So let's go and refine our brush by telling what needs to be refined, which is basically the whole of it. Okay. Now it's applying it. And as you can see now, it's much nicer now. It's quite easy. If I even give it more, let's see how changes affect the brush itself. 
Well, it didn't really do much in this case, but it's supposed to be refining pixel by pixel all your final brush. And that's basically what we're looking for. Okay, in any case, you can see now it's much nicer than it was some few seconds ago. So I say apply. And now what I want to do, it's first getting rid of the marquee, command D. And this is where the main difference comes in place. Now we have the black background and the white brush, which is what we needed for the vector brushes. In this case, well, we, we can either get rid of the background or we can just again say invert. Uh, it was in layer, new adjustment, invert. Get rid of the marquee, command D. And we can use this white background to export our brush. So let's try with this white background and we say export. PNG, we leave everything as is, export. Now we have a former test there, in there, so I'm going to just grab the same name, brush test. We save it. And now we come to our brushes. I have a new category here I created. I remember, I remind you that uh, it's just by clicking in this icon, create new category, just rename it and give it the name you want. So I already have it created. Now, as we did for the vector brushes, we say new intensity brush. We click in there, we grab our sample, we open it, and here we go. Now I'm going to create a new document, command N. And now it's important that you're aware that the moment you create a new document, this is gonna go back to the draw persona. So be sure that you click on the pixel persona, otherwise you're not gonna find your new brush because it was a pixel brush, okay? So we click in the pixel persona and here we have it. I'm gonna select it. And the next thing I need to do is selecting my brush tool in the toolbar. So I can click in here or I can click B on the keyboard. Just be aware that with the brush and the pixel tool, they, they both share the letter B on the keyboard. So if I click once, you're gonna get this pixel tool selected, which is not the one I want. And if I double click, I second click, I mean, on B, I'm gonna get the brush, which is the one I'm looking for selected. Make it a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna show you here, well, I have red selected, but I could have any other color selected. So if I just um, click on the canvas with the brush as is, you're gonna get basically a copy of um, what I exported, okay? But if I, I'm gonna just remove this, but if I drag it along the canvas, you're gonna get, well, a stroke. That is not exactly a nice stroke because it's quite like raw, let's call it raw. And you need some tweaking in order to just make it nicer. So you could be looking for just, you know, having, your brush as is, but usually what you want to do is just something nicer out of it. So we're gonna double click in here and we get presented with this dialogue we saw before for the vector brushes. And here we can just customize our tool in such a way that uh, we give it a different, um, different settings in order just to make it something nicer to get the most out of it. Um, you can also always go back to the original brush stroke, like this, but you can also create several different brushes out of this one. So let's just move it like this. Let's just give it a little bit of a nice jittering, some different settings. Then you could just you go just trying it and you know you will find your the right measures for each one of the sliders. No, this is no I'm looking for something like this one, like this one. Looks quite quite nice. See for example here we're uh, 
taking advantage of the edges that the original image had, also the different values. So, well, there is another one more tab. I'm not going to talk about this now. So now we come like this and as you can see, we have, well, a much more um, interesting, I would say, um, brush. So the difference in colors is because probably, probably I um, touched, no, I didn't. The saturation jitter, which is gonna make it, a ver, mm -hmm. ah, this one, the luminosity jitter. See, I also have to try things because sometimes I just forget. Um, see, you can just, I would like it, I would like it to have what Photoshop has, which is like a selector that allows you to choose the colors you want for the, for the brush itself. Um, here you have different options, but there's none I can see uh, for the coloring, not yet. So, but anyways, uh, rotation, velocity, that works with the, with the way you use your uh, pen or mouse or whatever you're using in your canvas. You can also make some changes here. So the brush, sorry, will behave in different ways depending on the settings you use. But basically I'm gonna look, put it back to the original color. Basically this is what I wanted you to see. Um, this is really nice. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Now, if just say um, you want to make a bundle because you like this um, brush and you make a, want to make a bundle, you will just create, let's import it again, um, intensity brush. We take again the same. We make a different, uh, some, nah, something like this and like, oof, like this one smaller with spacing something like that the rotation well you, you make your changes here Ooh, that's nice too yeah something like this dynamics jittering flow okay just let's leave it like this for the example so you make several of them different i'm gonna this and this okay so you make your different brushes and now as we saw for the vector brushes you just have to export them you export them let's call them test week and now we're going to create a new category let's imagine i'm someone else who wants to uh, use these brushes you created we have the file in here test af brushes we open it and now we get this dialog import brushes successfully. We say OK, and we have them here. So you can pass them along for other designers to use. OK, so that was it for today. Um, as I say, the brushes are not simply this I explained here. There are many more possibilities. Image brushes, rounded brushes, square brushes, this is just the pixel brushes and how you can create your own. And it's just um, a quick overview on some of the possibilities. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope you use it. I hope you create your own brushes, pass them along. So we create like a big library of brushes that uh, other designers can use as we have them for Photoshop. By the way, you can import Photoshop brushes in, into Affinity Designer just in case you didn't know, just by dragging and dropping. And that's it for today. I hope uh, you subscribe, you like, you comment, and um, I will see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.